Hi everybody, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. In this video, I want to talk about the second most common COVID vaccine question that I get. Now, before we get started, I always like to start off these videos by saying that I am a doctor who recommends routine vaccinations to all of my patients over the years. I've received all of the routine vaccinations myself. And not so long ago, we even took our dog to be vaccinated and he's a crazy Jack Russell Terrier, literally uncontrollable. And I don't think he was any more crazy after he got the vaccines. But anyway, I digress. Let's get back to the main issue at hand. The second most common COVID vaccine question I get is, how effective will the COVID vaccine be on me? Entirely understandable question. You have the shot, you want to know whether it's going to work or not. In order to answer this question, I want to go back to November, December time when news first broke about the first successful COVID vaccine. There was a lot of euphoria. Many people were happy, thought that this would be the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. And on many levels, that's an entirely understandable human reaction. A few weeks later, one of the first companies to publish news about their effective vaccine, which was Pfizer, actually published their full data in the New England Journal of Medicine. And I have the study here, and I want to go over a few aspects of it with you in order to help answer the question. And it's always a good idea to look at actual data, never go on a headline. And something that actually I found a bit concerning is over the last few months, I've talked to some doctors even who haven't read the study themselves. And if doctors aren't doing that, what hope is there for the rest of the population? I always encourage anyone, especially in medicine, whatever part of medicine you're in, whether you're a doctor, another professional, a nurse, always look at the actual data. And even if you're a scientist or a curious member of pu the public, this information is all openly available. So let's dive into this question then. How effective will the COVID vaccine be? And I want to focus on three particular aspects of the trial data from December, the Pfizer trial that caught my attention. Number one, absolute numbers involved. Like any good trial, they had two groups. They had a placebo group and a group that received the treatment, in this case, the COVID vaccine. They had about 18,500 people in each group that received two doses of either placebo or the vaccine. And they were measuring total number of COVID cases at least seven days after the second vaccine and looks like they followed for about three months. In the placebo group, they diagnosed 162 cases of COVID. And in the treatment group, they diagnosed eight cases of COVID. So although the absolute numbers were relatively small under 1% of each group, you did have a 95% reduction from 162 to eight cases cases in the time studied. Number two, how old were the trial participants? Very important question. Well, in the trial, they obviously wanted a wide range of ages and demographics, but their reported median age was 52 years old. That's a median age, but it's relatively young. I can tell you from working in the hospital over the last several months, year, that the typical age of patients that I've been seeing get severely affected by COVID and end up hospitalized has been older than that. Number three, comorbidities. According to their report here, 21% of their patients, that's one in five, had at least one coexisting condition. And this concerns me a little bit because it's a relatively healthy population compared to the types of people, again, that we've seen hospitalized who often have multiple comorbidities, whether it's heart disease, diabetes, lung disease. This population in the trial, only 21% had at least one comorbidity. So those are just three simple areas then from the initial COVID vaccine trial data from the study I just went through that caught my attention. Number one, absolute numbers involved. Number two, age of trial participants. And number three, comorbidities. And of course, we all want the vaccine to work. I want it to be 100% effective and there, for there to be no side effects whatsoever, normal life to resume and for us to never hear about COVID again. But that's not what we do as doctors and scientists. We always take a step back and we look at data objectively and using five own trial data that I just presented to you, if you extrapolate that out to say 2 million people, that would still be a thousand people who get COVID. And this is borne out in my experience over the last few weeks. And I'm sure you've been seeing stories all over the place. I've seen patients hospitalized who have COVID despite getting fully vaccinated. And that's not to scare you. We hope that the vaccine would have given them some protection and result in less severe cases. As far as study results go though, despite the scientific concerns that I have just raised, 
This is about as good as it gets for a vaccine trial that 95%, despite the relatively low numbers, still appears to be a good degree of protection. And the conversations that I've been having, certainly over the last few months as the vaccine has been rolled out to high-risk groups, is that for vulnerable people, having COVID would be far worse than having the vaccine. In other words, the benefits of taking the vaccine far outweigh any risks. And it's kind of all we have right now to offer some protection against this illness. And I've seen what COVID-19 can do to people over the last year in the hospital. But here's the thing, the human body is immensely complex, more complex than we could ever understand. And respiratory viruses can be absolutely ruthless. And we're seeing this now with COVID, all of the stories about mutations and variants, they're constantly looking for ways to attack vulnerable bodies. And that's what we're up against. And I'm sure you've already guessed, my concern is that vulnerable groups will still be affected by COVID. I hope come winter time, it will just be mild cases only. Uh, but that's the bigger issue at play here, that we're dealing with a ruthless virus that is constantly looking for ways to attack us. So in answer to the question then, how effective will the COVID-19 vaccine be? I always believe in being totally honest with patients. I'm not on board with some doctors who think that you have to dumb things down all the time. What I found in my medical practice is even the most uneducated patient on paper is still surprisingly knowledgeable about their health and has some very valid questions and concerns. With regards to the vaccine, yes, from what I've just told you, the trial data, not just this one, but others as well, do suggest significant efficacy. And especially if you're in a vulnerable group, whether that's because you're elderly, you have comorbidities, you have obesity, it's far better to take the vaccine than risk getting COVID, which could absolutely devastate you. What I'm not on board with though, is some doctors who have a, what I call a robotic message. They will go around and quote study results as if they're gospel truth. 95% effective, 95% effective. I mean, come on, we know in medicine and science that studies can often swing back and forth. You do a different study, you get a different result. And sometimes if you study people for longer, you can get a different result as well. These things are not gospel truth. You have to take everything as is, and often you have to go and get more data with time. The data so far from the time study does suggest efficacy, but I would still urge people to not think of this as a magic bullet, especially if you're in a vulnerable group still take extra precautions even after vaccination. If you're in a big family gathering, for instance, say you're elderly or you have comorbidities, stay away from someone who you know is sick. If you're going to somewhere, say a big crowd, be extra careful. These are all common sense pieces of advice. And of course, as a doctor who practices internal and lifestyle medicine, I always add an extra caveat when I'm advising the vaccine. Never forget everything that you can do to keep your own immune system strong. Eat a healthy diet, try to be as active as possible, make sure you get enough sleep, work on any stress in your life. I mean, how many times have you been stressed and picked up viral infections? It happens to people all the time. I know it used to happen to me sometimes in medical school when I was doing my exams. I would pick up mysterious viral infections because I was working too hard and not sleeping well. Viruses love attacking vulnerable immune systems, as I said. Never forget everything you can do to always be trying to keep your immune system strong. And I appreciate the fact that that might be difficult for very elderly people, say advice to exercise, but for most people out there, there's lots of things that you can always be doing to keep your immune system vigorous and strong. Thanks everyone for listening. Keep those questions coming. Remember, it's your body, it's your temple. You should have questions. Every doctor should be okay with being asked questions. As long as you're not asking really weird questions like is there meteorite dust in the vaccines, I'm okay with anything. And remember, when we stop asking questions, we're pretty much done, not only as intelligent people, but also as a society. It's also very un-British and un-American to not ask questions. Literally millions of people have died so that we can stand here in 2021 and openly ask questions and have scientific debate. Thanks again for watching. Follow me on MedStoic Lifestyle Medicine, YouTube and Facebook. I will see you again next time.